All right, in this video, we're going to cover how we can use PyQGIS to get the value of a raster at a point. So we'll start out just like always by opening up our Python console. And I'm going to open up uh, the text editor, and I'm going to add a new file. Oh, I clicked the run button, sorry. We're going to add a new file here. And so I'm going to create a file name first of all. And this is the same file I've copied and pasted over that I've used in uh, a previous tutorial. So it's just going to be a digital elevation model. And now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to add this elevation model to uh, the QGIS interface uh, like I showed you in the previous tutorials. Which we can do with fi.baseName. And we'll just uh, close those parentheses. And then we can do layer equals iFace dot add raster layer and fn f name. Now that should, when we run this, that should add our layer to the interface. All right, let's go ahead and quick run. We have an error. Line three. Oh. And this should be uh, capital N. Let's go ahead and run that. And there's my DEM. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this for now. Actually, we'll keep it open. We're going to need it here in a sec. Okay. So now what we want to do is from somewhere on this raster, we want to be able to, like, say, find out what the value at a certain point is. So down here you can see my coordinate, okay? And I'm in EPSG 26911, which I'm guessing is going to be a UTM. You can click on this probably to find out the details. It takes just a second to load. Okay, and so here it's up. So we see that we are in, indeed in a UTM zone. So these coordinates down here are going to be meters uh, north of the equator, which is going to be this second one that's going to be the y coordinate, and then meters from a central in relation to a, a false easting, which is going to be that first one there. So we'll go ahead and, and close that out now that we know what our coordinates mean, and we'll just need to query a point at certain coordinates that fall within this area. So there are a couple of ways we can do this. Um, the first is to use the data provider. So it will do layer.dataprovider, and then we can do sample. And this is going to take uh, two arguments. The first is going to be the coordinate location, and the second is going to be the band of the raster we want to sample. So the raster I'm using only has one band, so we'll use that and then we'll need to select some coordinates we want to use. So let's go ahead and just take a look up here somewhere. So we'll say our X will use 246573. I'm just gonna write this down, 246573. And for our Y, uh, we'll use 4306418. So we've got four, Three zero six four one eight. Just make sure that's pretty close to something. Four three zero. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, now this actually needs to be a point. We can't just put in those numbers. We need to actually input uh, a point feature, and that's actually pretty easy to do. We'll just do QGS point X Y. And it takes two parameters, which is going to be the x and y coordinates. So we'll put those in, and then comma, raster layer 1. Okay. And so that should give us the value. It'll, give us two, it'll return two variables. The first will be the value, and the second will be the result. Um, so the result's going to be true or false, uh, and false will happen if we query something outside of this area, outside of the raster area, which you can try here uh, in a minute. So let's go ahead and we'll just write in print val res, and we'll see what happens here. So, uh, first I'll go ahead, I'll remove this DEM, 
and then I'll click run here. Okay, and so you can see that my value is 2975, and let's go see if I can find those coordinates. So they're pretty, pretty close to, if we go 24, I'll we'll grab the identify tool first. So we're looking at 24, 6, 5, 7, 3, which is going to be over here. 24, 6, 5, right in here somewhere. And then 43, 0, 6, 4, 1, 8, 0, 6, 4, 0, 6, 4, 6, 4, 1, 8. Well, I'm not having a time of that. that. Oh, here we go. It's right in here somewhere. 0, 0, 6, 4, 1, 1, 8. That's too, too high. Should it be right, right in here? We're looking at 5, 7, 3. So maybe over 1, one cell. 1, 8. So it's probably, probably right in here. Let's see if that leads pretty close. Yeah, so you can see my, see my value right here. It's about the same as that. I click on that point. Okay. So good deal. So we have we have that method of doing this. So the uh, uh, there is one other way we can do this, and that's actually really similar to what I just did is to use this identify feature to identify um, the value at a point. So we'll go ahead and we'll give that a try. I'm going to keep this here, um, and so we're going to do layer to be data provider, only this time uh, we're going to use the identify. And we'll still use this QGS point here. So I'll just copy and paste that in. And then we require one more parameter, which is going to be QGS raster uh, I identify result I believe I'm just gonna double check that okay I got this wrong so this is QGS raster dot identify format okay um, and so what this will return it is going to just return um, something in identify format And so we can print this, and it will actually be a dictionary. So you notice we didn't give it a band number here. So this will return the values for all the bands at that point in dictionary form. And we can go ahead and run this to see what it, to see what I'm talking about. So let's remove this layer, and let's go ahead here, and we'll hit Run again. And we have an error here. So it looks like in line 11, let me just check on this real quick. Okay, and the problem is this should be identify format value, not identify format. So I'll remove this again, and we'll click run, and there we go. Um, okay, so you can see this is second print statement is pointing to uh, an object in memory so we'll go ahead and clean that up so that it actually points so we can actually read what it is and we do that by ident.results and uh, we'll remove this again and go ahead and click run oh and it's still not showing up there. Hold on, just like I'll figure this out. Okay, one last problem, and that's we need parentheses here to call those results. Um, we'll remove this one last time here, and we'll click run, and there we go. So you can see there's one band, one colon, and the value of that band. If there were multiple bands, it would have one colon, two colon, three colon, etc. And you'd be able to see the value for each of those bands. Okay, so let's try something here where we um, uh, choose a point that's not actually going to be here. And we can do that by making this x coordinate 0. Um, 
that x coordinate should never get to zero because the the false easting is chosen so that the x value is always greater than zero with the utm projection so we'll select that i'll just remove this so we don't get clutter build up and then i'll click run and what we should see here is this value that says true um, for that first result should be false now i haven't changed this and so we're okay there um, but let's go ahead and click run so you can see we get a not a number and then and we get false so we did not have a successful result there so now for the ident, we might have a problem here, but let's just go ahead and see what happens. So we'll change that to zero also, and we'll click remove layer, and I'll click run here. Okay, and so this says none. Um, now you can see that these are some things that are important to know about, because if you're going through writing some code or writing a program and you run into these problems, you need to know how to handle them. And so with ident, a great thing it has is it has a, um, a member function that is called isValid that will allow us to see if that is valid, if the point is valid. So I'm going to hit Control z here um, to bring that point back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to print ident.isValid, and we'll see what that gives us because we know this point is valid. So we'll click Run, and you can see it says true. Okay, so now we'll change this to zero. Um, let's go ahead and click run. And it also is a valid result, uh, even though we're outside of the range. So it doesn't give us a value. So that's just an example of how you can see um, how these different uh, ways to query raster values um, behave when you have a correct value, when you have a value that's outside of the raster area. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. You know, comment below on this video, and I, I'd like to, you know, address any questions you have or any things you'd like to see me do uh, with PyQGIS. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will get this code up on the website so you can follow along there.